I greet you and welcome you, dear friends. I kindly invite you as you join me in one of life's most difficult examinations, that is the exam of waiting. But before we engage in the exam, shall we bow down our heads as we pray? Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we come unto you at this hour. We thank you for your love and your mercy, for the gift of health and the gift of life. And we thank you even for the friends that are surrounding me. As we engage into this examination that involves waiting, may you give us the patience that is required and may you feed us through your word. For we pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I greet you once again, dear friend, and I welcome you to this examination, the examination of waiting. I know that somewhere, somehow, we usually are not interested in examinations, but because of life, we find ourselves somewhere, somehow, engaging in these examinations. Somewhere, somehow, we cannot avoid them, whether we like it or not. I faced this examination at my home. That is the examination of waiting. I have some banana trees at my home. And you know, sometimes you look at a branch and you think that it is almost there, it's almost ripening. But as you look at that uh, branch and think it's almost ripening, after a day or two, you go and check again and you find that the branch is not yet ripened. A week goes and you check again, you find it is still the same. Another week goes again, and then maybe when you are almost expecting that it's all right, you go and check again. Maybe after one month and one day, you find now a yellow banana, and this shows that the banana has ripened. And you just take, cut the branch, put it in a sack, and after three days, it has ripened. So this is an examination that you get in unknowingly. Your patience is being tested. If you are impatient and then after three weeks you cut the bunch of bananas while it has not yet ripened, you find that maybe the bananas would not be so tasty or it takes even longer to ripen or the, bunch, the, the branch of bananas may not uh, ripen at all. So may the Lord teach us that we may be patient as we wait for the bananas uh, to ripen. So the test is not only on the uh, bunch of bananas, but the test can be found also in various ways. We find out that sometimes you may have to wait a long time. You have written your examination, but you need to wait for a long time before the results are out. You may need also to wait for a job opportunity. So as you wait for those things, you are waiting and you are engaging in the exam. And this is an examination of waiting, an exam that you may either pass or fail. As we engage into this exam, we have our leading question. What is the meaning of the word wait? That is one of our questions. Then the other question is why wait? Why should we wait? What lessons can we learn about patience in the crucible? Patience while waiting. What is the contrast between God's time and our own time? What happens if we are not patient enough and we do not want to wait? What are the benefits of waiting? All these questions are the questions that we will grapple with and even try to answer and may the Lord help us as we try to find answers to these questions. One of our themes is a difficult examination. As I said before, we have been examined through quizzes or other means. Certain exams were easy, but some are very challenging. Was there a time when your patience was tested? You feel you need to be married, but for the last five years, no one has approached you. You have retired one and a half years ago, but your retirement pa package has not yet come. You wrote an examination three months ago, but the results which were supposed to come two months ago are not yet out. What is your reaction in this examination? Do you give up on the issue of getting married? 
do you take those who have not given you your package, your retirement package to court? Or do you shout at them? You need to pass this examination. And when we look at Psalm 27, verse 14, we have a particular way in which the Lord helps us to try and react or maybe pass this examination. Psalm 27, verse 14 reads, Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. So in all these situations that I have talked about, waiting for your package at work, waiting for the examination results, and various aspects of the waiting, what we need to do is to wait upon the Lord. The Lord is faithful unto us, and we should wait for the right time, because as the Bible says, and as certain people say, God's time is always the best time. You may think that there is a delay, but God wishes the best all the times for you. We are going to move on to another theme, God's time in contrast to our time. One singer says, or sings, isn't it that when he is four days late, he is always on time? It appears there is a contrast in the way that we see time and the way God sees time. As human beings, when we reflect upon time, we want those things which take less time. We are not very patient. But it appears God is not in a hurry because when we read the Bible, to him, a day is like a thousand years. And because of that, it appears we say God is delayed, while in actual fact, God hasn't delayed. We can reflect in the Bible and we reflect on the story of Mary and Martha. They waited for Jesus to come, but Jesus did not come. And when he came later, it appears Lazarus had been buried for four days. So the singer says, four days late, but still on time. But what do we say concerning that? Yes, to Mary and mother, Jesus was late. Or it appeared he was late, but to him it was the right time. Why? Because when he came after those four days, Jesus Christ was able to raise Lazarus. So we may have waited for days, we may have waited for months, we may have waited for years, and we think that Jesus has delayed. But as the story of Mary and Martha shows, when he is four days late, he is still on time. So we are being challenged to see time, not in our way, but in God's way. So when certain things have delayed, the encouragement is don't quickly give up, but wait because God is still on time. Don't rush to pay a bribe to get a license because the time to get a license will come. God's time will be the best. Don't rush to bribe in order to get a place at a college or university, but wait for God's time because God's time is the best. We are now moving on to another theme. When a promise seems not to be fulfilled. Usually when people have promised us, we wait for the fulfillment. We also expect that that promise will be fulfilled in the right time. But sometimes, somehow, we find that days, months, or years may pass before the promise has been fulfilled. What do we do when the promises have not been fulfilled or they have been delayed. We can consider the popular story in the Bible when Abraham was promised a son. So instead of waiting for God's promise, he took Hagar. And we know that when you don't do things according to God's promise, they strive, there are problems. We find out that there were lots of quarrels between Sarah and Hagar. Why? Because Abraham had failed to observe God's time. Abraham had failed to wait for the right time. They had connived together with the wife, thinking of a plan that would take lesser time, but instead it even took longer. So we have a lesson in the Bible, in the story of David. David is promised and anointed to be the king, but after the promise and the anointing, 
we find out that David did not suddenly become a king. He had to wait for years. And during these years of waiting, we find out that David had to encounter challenges. One of the challenges was that Saul was jealous over him and Saul even tried to kill him. But the interesting thing is that we find out that David had even opportunities to kill Saul. And in 1 Samuel 26 verse 7, there was a 100% opportunity of David to kill Saul. But instead of killing Saul, he managed to take the spear of Saul to show that he had the chance, but he did not kill Saul. Why? Because David was waiting for the right time for God to anoint him as king. So we have lessons here from David. We should wait for the proper time. Let's not use our energy, strength, or everything that we have to fulfill God's purpose. Yes, David would have killed Saul in order to be a king, but he waited for the right time. So we are challenged, dear friends, to wait also for the appropriate time. We are moving to another theme, the danger of not waiting. Not many of us like to wait, but when you don't wait, there, should be, there is some danger. That is the danger of not waiting. We have the story of Elijah. Elijah had done a great miracle. Fire was called from heaven and it consumed the sacrifice. And through the power of God, we find that Elijah managed to kill the 450 prophets of Baal. But then there was this threat of Jezebel. Jezebel threatened and wanted to kill Elijah. But Elijah now lost patience. Elijah could not no longer wait upon God. And what happened? When this happened, he had to run away in fear of his life. And he found himself in a cave. And the Bible reads, the Lord had to come to Elijah because Elijah was now at the wrong place as well as at the wrong time. And in 1 Kings 19 verse 9, uh, the Lord had to come to Elijah and ask the question, what are you doing here, Elijah? Why? Because Elijah was at the wrong place and at the wrong time. So the lesson that is coming is that like Elijah, sometimes we fail to wait and sometimes we rush. When marriages failed, we may continue to rush and get someone outside the church. And then we call our pastors and we call our elders to pray for us when things are not moving well in the home. When things are not moving well, we may rush uh, to pay a bribe for a license, but we find we are not satisfied. Our conscience will still be reporting to us. When we fail to find a job, we may even go on and look for a job that will lead us to work on Sabbath, but we are finding that all those problems are due to the issue of rushing. Instead of rushing, dear friends, let's wait for the proper time. God's time is the best. We need to wait for the Lord. We need to learn from the mistake that Elijah and various other characters made. We are now moving on to the last part and the last theme of our lesson that is waiting in joy. When we are waiting, sometimes we are not patient. When we are waiting, sometimes we are not in joy. We complain and do other things. But we have a lesson from David, again, that is coming from David again. We find in chapter 37, David is surrounded by various enemies, and it appears things are not moving well. But instead of being negative, we find out that David was still optimistic. We we'll read from Psalm 37, verse 4. While David is encountering those problems, instead of weeping, instead of crying, he says these important words that come from Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So instead of complaining, instead of lacking joy, instead of being impatient, we are to wait upon the Lord, and he will give us the desires of our heart. But for us to do that, we need to have patience. We need to wait upon the Lord. So in David, we have the attitude of Jesus. That is the attitude of waiting for the right time. 
As we conclude our lesson today, we find that yes, as we said before in our introduction, waiting is one of the most difficult exams to pass. But in this lesson, we have been equipped with exam tips, we have been equipped with notes, we have been equipped with guidelines to ensure that we succeed in this exam of waiting. As we wait, may we get the various lessons that, and the tips and make use of them that as we wait, we may be patient. Before we pray, I will read these words from our sister Ellen G. White. She says, the Lord is not pleased to have us fret and worry ourselves out of the arms of Jesus. More is needed, more of quiet watching and waiting combined. So may the Lord help us as we watch and wait in either positive or negative situations. Shall we bow down our heads as we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we continue to come unto you. We thank you for this crucial lesson on waiting. Be with us, do for us whatever we cannot do for ourselves. We know that some have waited for years for certain answers. It may be concerning the issue of life partners. It may be concerning the issue of packages, examination results, or other opportunities that may present themselves. It is our wish and our prayer that you may equip us so that we may pass this examination of waiting. We have learned the lessons of patience from David. May those lessons motivate and inspire us so that our waiting may be in patience and our waiting may not be in vain through your leading and your guidance. Do for us, dear Lord, whatever we cannot do for ourselves. For we pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.